Alright, so this is what my Grafana dashboard looks like at this time. As you can see, I'm graphing the transmit and receive rate of gig 0000, uh, the number of packets, the number of routes per protocol, um, how much memory are they taking, the CPU processes, and my syslog messages over here. So, looking back at our pipeline configuration file, like I said, this is the imp uh, input section where we define our transport input. Uh, so we're listening on port 5432, and then we're going to be injecting that data onto InfluxDB using this metrics.json file. Before we get into this, I wanted to show you this other configuration file that I have here. So one of the good things about pipeline is you can run multiple instances of it at the same time. Um, so I'm going to run another pipeline using this other configuration file, which, which is taking, it's pretty much doing the same for the input, except we're using a different port. So we're listening on a, another port number. Uh, and we're going to be sending that data out to a uh, log file. Um, and we're going to use JSON to encode that file. Uh, and this is very good for troubleshooting. So if you are certain that pipeline is receiving data, and you can also set a filter or a setting here in this input section to debug um, whatever you're receiving on pipeline. Um, and like I said, I'm going to put the links to all the references here in the video below um, so you can read up on all that. Um, but this is a very good tool for troubleshooting. So let me go back to my terminal and I'm going to run. So this is where I have my main pipeline instance uh, using the mycfg uh, comp file. So I'm going to run another pipeline using this other configuration file called typeapp.cfg. And if I look at my router, and this is the uh, configuration hierarchy, telemetry model driven. As you can see, I have more than one destination group. Uh, this is the main. This is the main destination group, and this is the one that I'm using for for the tap. Um, if we look at the subscriptions, you can see that they're all active. That means this, everything is good. So going back to the terminal, and I should be able to see this uh, tap file and if we tail it we should see data coming in and it looks like we are there we go so I'm gonna stop this pa uh, this uh, pipeline and let's look at our router again so there's a few things that I forgot to mention in the previous video uh, for instance the max containers per pad uh, line over here so when it comes to the sensor group, this is where you do most of the filtering because you know the more specific you get, the less information that the router is going to be sending out to the collector. Um, so there was a rule before version 6.2.0 on iOS XR or something like that uh, that allowed you to or, or limited you to sensor pads that did not have more than 15 containers on below. Uh, so basically, if you specified a short sensor pad that had more than 15 containers down below, then you, the parser wouldn't take it, or uh, basically this would not stay active. Or rather, uh, there was a command, which I think if, let's see, on uh, show telemetry model driven, sensor group. So here it wouldn't say resolve, but it would say like partial or it would tell you like, hey, you got way too many containers under this sensor pad. Um, but this piece of line here now, you can um, overcome that basically. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention from here is notice how this subscription only has, or the sample interval in this subscription is zero. Um, so what this means is this is an event driven subscription. Uh, so instead of sending data every five seconds, we're only going to be sending data once the router generates it. For, so for instance, this is something you would use for things like syslog, which is what I'm doing over here. And as you can see, you can map um, multiple sensor groups to the same destination group. Um, so going back to the 
pipeline pipeline tab log file um, and it should be here uh, it was a tab file that log. so this is what we're getting from the router um, notice over here is this is kind of like your header where it tells you the basic information like where is this data coming from uh, what's the sensor that this is uh, you know being generated from uh, the timestamp and then um, here is where basically the metrics.json file comes into play notice how this one this has a key called instance name so looking back at the metrics.json file notice how some of these fields are set to tags and basically uh, the rule is or whatever what InfluxDB tells you is if you're gonna be pull if you're gonna be making queries on something um, constantly make sure that that's set as a tag instead of a field value because it's more performant to make queries on tags so basically that's what you want to do pipeline by default is gonna set the whatever comes in as a key is going to automatically send it to the time series database as a key no matter what you set on the fields or on, on the metrics.json file but if there's anything else that you're going to be making a lot of queries on uh, then you want to make that a, a tag here in the metrics.json um, so there's basically two things that are going to help you when trying to figure out how you're going to build this metrics.json file um, the first one is going to be the actual um, Yang modules. So if you go to the GitHub and let's say we're looking for VGP and I'm looking at the operational, there's two uh, Yang files here. One is the main one and then there's a, a subsection. Uh, so if we open up the main one and this is basically organized by containers, within containers, within containers, within lists uh that ultimately you're gonna end up at a leaf which is the last hierarchy over here and then there's this other thing called groupings which are referenced like this uses this uses this so these are groupings which contain more containers and lists and and um leaves ultimately the other tool and we're gonna make a video about you know how to walk through this gang files and also using the second tool that i was going to mention which is piang uh, which is a Python tool to basically read through the uh, Yang models. Okay, so the other thing that I was going to show you is, um, so here's my Bird configuration file. Uh, so what we're doing with Bird, as a reminder, is we're taking, uh, we're injecting uh, 15,000 OSPF routes and 20,000 BGP routes. Um, so we're basically generating all those routes as static routes and then using filters to export those routes out to BGP and OSPF. And it's very straightforward. This is how you configure OSPF. This is how you configure BGP. And I'm going to put this file in my blog post as well. All right, so going back to the Grafana dashboard. And pull up the router so let's do let's try this um, I'm gonna shut down the BGP neighbor and we should be able to see that on our syslog right here so there, there's there's a commit change uh, and there's the router going down or the neighbor going down and shortly we should see the routes, the number of routes dropping. Uh, let's change this to 15 minutes. And there we go. Uh, so we went from 20,000 BGP routes and 15,000 OSPF routes to zero BGP routes. And the OSPF routes are still there. And as you can see, the memory dropped as well. So that's going to be it for the demo. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. If you got any questions, make sure you leave a comment down there. Um, and thanks for watching.